President Irfan Ali, Ghana is ready to take its transformative steps into the future. 13-year-old shot during dispute over trespassing count. Beware of potential killer bees. In the region, Haitian gang demands $1 million each for kidnapped U.S. missionaries. And Brazil's Bolsonaro should face COVID charges, Senate inquiry. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Channel 2 Headline News Updates. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. His Excellency Dr. Irfan Ali yesterday told investors in the United Arab Emirates that Guyana is ready to take its transformative steps into the future and that it is an open economy with investor-friendly policies. The head of state who delivered the feature address at Ghana's National Day celebrations at Expo 2020 Dubai not only highlighted the country's potentials but its strategic locations its harmonious diversity and its picturesque natural attractions. Guyana needs to convert its abundant resources. We need you. We welcome you. And we urge you to remember the name Guyana and to keep the name Guyana in your plans for growth and development, both in country and by businesses and sectors. The president said that his government is business friendly and that his country has laws which, quote, protects the right to property and which also allows freedom to repatriate profits, end of quote. We need investment to drive our trans transformative agenda. And we are keen on attracting investment across all sectors. I invite you, all of you, to come and do business in my country. We welcome you. We have an open economy and with investor-friendly policies in place, including attractive incentive regimes, laws which protect the right to property and which also allows freedom to repatriate profits. Ghana's potential was highlighted by the president who listed several facts about the country, including its unstoppable growth, natural wealth, current position on the investment radar due to its oil, and a plethora of sectors, including agriculture, that have the capacity and potential for massive expansions. Ghana is the most resource-rich country in the English-speaking Caribbean. If we speak about the world food production, environmental services, world-class ecotourism, freshwater potential, mining opportunities, research and development, human transformation, health and educational services, I assure you, Guyana will be an important part of that conversation. Although the focus was on investment opportunities, the president highlighted the progressive nature of his country, including its drive towards preservation and protection of its environment. The country's tourism potential was also highlighted, especially its sustainable tourism development drive. The president said that the drive behind Guyana's transformational agenda is the development of its human resources. He says he believes the country is in its finest era and will progress with all its people. The country is being prepared for its fastest and most explosive economic and social transformation. We want to ensure a prosperous country where our people can enjoy high standards of living, including a 21st century education and world-class health services. I want Guyanese to enjoy these and other benefits in a healthy, safe, and secure environment. We want to see a modern Guyana, which would mold the next generation of our children and provide them with the best life that we can offer. We want to build a more inclusive society in which our diversity is celebrated. The president said Guyana is now ranked among the world's top 20 countries in terms of oil reserves. Oil production commenced in December 2019 and is expected to continue to increase well beyond the turn of the decade. A 13-year-old was shot during a dispute over a trespassing count. Here's more from Esther Silvers. Police are investigating a shooting incident that involved a 13-year-old at a Duck Creek Corriverton River Burbies on Tuesday. Police inquiries disclosed that the suspect, a caterer employed at Mool Prasad Maniram, 
He resides at his employer's property at Dog Creek, Quarantine River, Burbies, where he and two others looked after his employer's cattle. The victim's father, Ram Nirmal, is also rearing animals on a portion of the land near Mani Ram's property. It is alleged that his cows would regularly damage Mani Ram's barbed wire fence and enter into his property. On the day in question around 7 a.m., Ram Nirmal, his son, and two of his workers went into Mani Ram's property to look for his cows when the suspect confronted them with a shotgun. An argument ensued between Nirmal and the suspect. Nirmal told his 13-year-old son to use his cell phone to video the suspect with the gun. The suspect then discharged six rounds from the gun in the direction of Nirmal and the 13-year-old. A pellet hit the 13-year-old on his right foot. The suspect then escaped into the bushes. The 13-year-old was taken to the Skeldon Public Hospital. He was treated and sent away. Efforts to contact the suspect were unsuccessful. A colleague of the suspect is in police custody assisting with investigations. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. In this report, Nirmala Ramsawa tells us that a motorcycle rider is in the hospital recovering from serious injuries sustained when he was hit by an intoxicated driver. Here's more. A motorcyclist is now seriously injured after being involved in an accident on Monday night at the Laban Intention Access Road on the east coast of Demerara. The injured man has been identified as Randy Rutherford of Rasville, Roxanne Barnum Gardens, Georgetown. He is currently a patient at the Georgetown Public Hospital suffering from an amputated left hand, a broken left foot, and other injuries to his body. Inquiries is closed at around 10 p.m. Motocar PRR 3440, driven by Sachin Bishwa of Monrepo, North East Coast Demerara, was proceeding north on the access road. Motorcycle CH 1819, driven by Rutherford, was proceeding south along the road and overtook a lorry. It is alleged that he lost control and collided with the left side front of the motocar. As a result of the collision, Rutherford fell onto the roadway and received injuries to his body. He was subsequently picked up in an unconscious condition by Bishwa and police ranks and taken to the Georgetown Public Hospital. He was seen and examined by a doctor on duty and admitted as a patient. Bishwa was later arrested and taken into police custody. A breathalyzer test which was conducted on him showed that he was above the legal alcohol limit. A notice of intended prosecution has not yet been served. Inquiries are in progress. Reporting for a headline news update, Nirmala Ramsiwak. Thanks, Nirmala. Stick around after the break. Brother of Ganesh Basad calls on authorities to devise alternative methods of preventing similar crime and beware of potential killer bees. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> oh! Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome to Kasoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of pets and mattresses. Kisum's Furniture. Furnishing homes for over 60 years. 
Alibaba Trade-In has everything you need every day. The best brands at the lowest prices. And right now, you can save much more on a larger range of food products and everyday essentials. Choose from our extensive array of fresh and packaged food items. Plus, there's a huge variety in ladies' handbags and accessories, children's toys, backpacks and school bags, bicycles, rugs, outdoor and indoor furniture, cleaning and sanitizing products, and so much more. Alabama Trade-In. Better products, better prices. When you need money and you've got to get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop. Be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Smart Minds Educational Institute, offering preschool, nursery and primary levels. Finally, a school that is every parent's dream. Located at 69 Crow Street, offering academic excellence, trained qualified teachers, small class sizes, personalized care, and one-to-one -one attention for your little ones. At Smart Minds, register for full-time or evening classes, daily practice pass exam papers for proficiency at the grade 2, 4, and 6 assessment, and CXE exam preparedness. Or join our Becca Phonics reading and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery, or primary level, come to Smart Mind, located at 69 Earl Street, or call 231 4885 or 600 9229 to enroll now. Survival Supermarket Senior Citizens Day is every Wednesday and you can get 7% off everything on sale except alcoholic drinks. And to make more of our customers eligible, we have dropped the age requirement from 60 to 55. So you can benefit from the big discounts on everything in your trolley. Yes, Survival Supermarket Senior Citizens Day gives you 7% off every Wednesday if you're 55 and older, of course. Just walk with your ID card as proof of your age and then shop, shop, shop at Survival Supermarket. Welcome back. Be on the lookout for a possible bee attacks along the coastland, with a pensioner being the most recent victim of a suspected deadly bee killing. Dale Jarvis has more. A 66-year-old pensioner was found dead on Monday, October 18th at the Montrose Seawall East Coast Demerara with what appeared to be bee stings all over his body. Around 5 p.m. on Monday, the body of Hanif Mohammed of Montrose East Coast Demerara was found motionless at the seawall. The deceased was last seen alive on Monday around 8 p.m. by residents. According to reports, on Sunday, October 17, swarms of bees attacked several residents around the Montrose East Coast Demerara area. As a result of the attacks, a bee catcher was alerted to tend to the bees. On his arrival, he discovered the deceased was laying motionless on the ground. He was then picked up by public-spirited people and taken to the GPHC where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Residents in Borbis and on the East Coast Demerara in particular are urged to be wary since several persons in those areas have recently been attacked by bees, with several dying as a result of the stings. Reporting for Headline News Update, Dale Jervis. Thanks, Dale. Police in Linden arrested a 13-year-old and a 17-year-old juvenile for allegedly robbing a 36-year-old female security guard at Knife Point at the Christian Bird Nursery School in Wismer, Linden on Tuesday, October 19th. According to police investigators, around 11.50 p.m., the victim who was on duty at the Christianburg Nursery School was in the guard hut when she was confronted by three suspects, one of whom was armed with a brown handle knife. The armed suspect then entered the guard hut and took the victim's black cell phone valued at $43,000 before fleeing to the back of the compound. The security guard raised an alarm and her colleague, who was in another guard hut, gave chase and was able to capture one of the suspects. As a result, the police were summoned. The suspect was arrested and taken into custody and questioned. However, he later assisted the police investigators with further investigations, which led to the arrest of a second suspect. Meanwhile, a third suspect is currently on the run. Further investigations are currently ongoing. In this report, the brother of Ganesh Basad gives an account of the last moments of his brother and requests that the appropriate authorities devise an alternative method of preventing similar transgressions. 
near Malaram Sivak, Asma. The brother of 20-year-old Ganesh Pasad, who was killed during an armed robbery last Friday at Trasvi on the east coast of Demerara, said his brother would have celebrated his 21st birthday yesterday if he was not stopped multiple times. In an interview with Headline News Update, Andrew Persad recounted the armed robbery of his brother's store deals on electronics. Around 3.30 p.m., 24-year-old Kapil Dogangadin entered the store and requested to view a music equipment. After making the request, Ganesh attempted to exit through a half door to show the murder suspect the equipment, but Gangadin ripped out a knife and stabbed him six times in the upper body, leaving Ganesh unconscious. Gangadin robbed Ganesh of two pieces of jewelry worth approximately $2.5 million and an undisclosed amount of cash before fleeing the scene. Shortly after, Ganesh regained consciousness and walked over to a nearby shop to his father seeking medical help. He then concluded to his dad that he didn't think that he would be able to make it. He later died as a result of his injuries while being rushed to the city hospital. Ganesh Pusad's older brother said, quote, My brother had big dreams. He was to launch another one of his business ventures on Christmas Eve day later this year. End quote. He further stated that his mother, who is still in a state of shock, was out of the country seeking medical treatment when the tragic incident occurred. His father is still finding it much harder to cope. Subsequently, the suspect was caught by law enforcement officers and taken to the vigilance police station, where he later confessed to the killing. Like, you know, this thing happens so fast. Me just, me think, me just get in my mind and I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Kapil Dogangadin appeared in the Kovanjan Magistrate Court on Wednesday. He was remanded to prison on two counts of murder. Gangadin was charged with the fatal stabbing of Ganesh Chris Pasad on October 15, 2021 and the murder of a 24-year-old fisherman Mukesh Mangra on January 18, 2020. Additionally, Pasad's brother is calling on the relevant authorities to come up with an alternative solution to eliminate crime in Guyana. He added that too many innocent lives are being lost. An autopsy conducted on the remains of the young businessman on Monday at the Georgetown Public Hospital Mortuary revealed that Pasad died as a result of an incised wound to the neck. Pasad leaves to mourn his mother, his father, and older brother. Reporting for Headline News Update, Nirmala Ramsawak. Thanks, Nirmala. Don't go away after the break. Haitian gang demands $1 million each for kidnapped U.S. missionaries, and Brazil's Bolsonaro should face COVID charges, Senate inquiry. But before that, here's the bridge retraction schedule. Survival Supermarket Senior Citizens Day is every Wednesday and you can get 7% off everything on sale except alcoholic drinks. And to make more of our customers eligible, we have dropped the age requirement from 60 to 55. So you can benefit from the big discounts on everything in your trolley. Yes, Survival Supermarket Senior Citizens Day gives you 7% off every Wednesday if you're 55 and older, of course. Just walk with your ID card as proof of your age and then shop, shop, shop at Survival Supermarket. When you need money, and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold, and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955.
Alabama Trading has everything you need every day. The best brands at the lowest prices. And right now, you can save much more on a larger range of food products and everyday essentials. Choose from our extensive array of fresh and packaged food items. Plus, there's a huge variety in ladies' handbags and accessories, children toys, backpacks and school bags, bicycles, rugs, outdoor and indoor furniture, cleaning and sanitizing products and so much more. Alabama Trading. Better products, better prices. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome to Kasoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at news in the region and around the world. A gang that abducted 17 Christian missionaries in Haiti has issued a ransom demand. It is asking for $17 million from Christian aid missionaries, a United States-based religious aid group for the 16 Americans and one Canadian. Al Jazeera's John Hendricks reports. A Haitian gang has put a price on the lives of 17 missionaries taken captive in Port-au-Prince, $17 million. The ransom amounts to a million dollars for each of the five men, seven women, and five children captured by a group called 400 Nawazo as they were building an orphanage. It's a risk Haitian missionaries now face daily. It is like living in a war zone. You don't know when you're going to get shot at. You don't know when you're going to get kidnapped. That is a very real concern here in Ohio, where many in the religiously conservative Amish and Mennonite community consider it their Christian mission to fund advancements abroad even as many of them live much as they did in the 19th century. The ransom demand is a drop in the bucket for an organization that brings in $130 million a year in donations from around the world. But now Christian Aid Ministries has an ethical decision to make. Do they pay it and risk funding the kidnapping machine in Haiti? Or do they refuse and risk the lives of the missionaries they sent there? At the White House, President Joe Biden is getting updates on what is both a crisis for the missionaries' families and a criminal case. The FBI is a part of a coordinated U.S. government effort to get the U.S. citizens involved to safety. Armed gangs have stepped up their campaign of kidnapping, extortion and sexual violence across large parts of Haiti. U.S. officials say they've been trying to help the government cope with the problem. We realize what a priority this is for the people of Haiti, and that's why uh, we have provided funding to the tune of $312 million uh, in assistance uh, over the last decade alone uh, to strengthen law enforcement and capacity uh, of the Haitian National Police and to maintain peace and stability uh, throughout the country. Even so, U.S. citizens have been repeatedly warned against visiting Haiti because of the violence and instability. President Jovenel Moise was assassinated in July, and an earthquake struck in August. U.S.-based Christian Aid Ministries is just one of dozens of religious groups doing work in Haiti. Some are now asking whether the U.S. should send in troops to rescue the missionaries, or whether the United Nations needs to expand its peacekeeping operations in a nation where hostage-taking is now, on average, an everyday occurrence. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Millersburg, Ohio. A congressional committee in Brazil is set to recommend mass homicide charges against President Jair Bolsonaro, which includes the intentional failure to tackle the coronavirus, not acquiring vaccines early on, and peddling bogus treatment, which led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. Al Jazeera's Monica Yannicki reports. The last day of hearings and the most painful of all, outside Brazil's Congress, hundreds of white handkerchiefs, a symbol of tears shed for the victims of the pandemic. 
They were hung in Rio de Janeiro's iconic Copacabana Beach when Brazil reached the tragic milestone of 600,000 deaths by COVID-19, the world's second largest. The handkerchiefs were then carried in a box to the capital, Brasilia, by taxi driver Márcio do Nascimento, whose son died more than a year ago. He spoke on behalf of thousands of Brazilians who lost their loved ones and blamed the government for their suffering, especially President Jair Bolsonaro, who denied the severity of the pandemic, scoffed at social distancing measures and delayed the vaccination campaign. I think we deserve an I think we deserve an apology from the highest authority in the country. This is not about politics. It's not about belonging to one party or another. We're talking about people's lives. He's not alone. Nurse Mayra Pires was working in Manaus, Brazil's gateway to the Amazon rainforest, when the city ran out of oxygen. Her brother and sister died, leaving four children in her care. A bit of common sense and humanity on the part of those who govern us could have helped avoid such tragedy in the Amazon. Student Giovanna Gomes Mendes spoke on behalf of Brazil's 120,000 COVID-19 orphans. She lost both parents within two weeks and was left alone with her 10-year-old sister and no means to support themselves. We had friends and family who helped us, but many do not, Giovanna said. The government, she claimed, should be financially responsible for them. The result of this six-month parliamentary inquiry of the government's handling of the pandemic will be a 1,200-page report asking for the indictment of at least 70 people, among them President Jair Bolsonaro and his sons. Many in Brazil believe it will have no impact. This investigation will lead nowhere. The report needs to be examined by Brazil's Attorney General, and it will probably end up in a draw. But the Vice President of the Senate Committee, in charge of the investigation, told us they will try to get justice for the victims by all means, even if it means turning to the international court. He says the probe has already produced a change. Before the probe began, President Jair Bolsonaro was the only person who had a say in Brazil. He acted in the worst possible way, and there was no response. The Senate was the first institution that reacted to the atrocities he committed and investigated his crimes. And to our surprise, we unveiled corruption scandals involving the acquisition of vaccines. The investigation has already taken a toll on Bolsonaro's popularity. More than half of Brazilians reject his government. Monica Yanakiev, Al Jazeera. And internationally, Turkey is battling Europe's highest inflated rate of more than 19%. The Turkish lira has lost nearly 60% of its value against the US dollar in the past three years, Al Jazeera reports. The tomato is an essential ingredient in most Turkish cuisine and it's now selling at a record price, a rise of 70% in only one year. And in this traditional farmer's market in the middle-class district of Bacelevlar in Istanbul, shoppers are feeling the pinch. Awful. It's expensive in the supermarkets too, but pensions stay the same. Some people here blame the government for lacking effective economic policies. Others say tradesmen and the wholesalers are taking advantage. No conscience left in their hearts. They want to earn easy money. This man says he's paying 40% more for floor than he did three months ago. And as his customers' incomes don't change, he can't raise the price. So the portions of Turkish filo dough he sells now weigh 110 grams instead of the standard 150 grams. At more than 19 percent, Turkey has the highest inflation rate in Europe and the 10th highest in the world. For many in Turkey, it's the season to conserve food for winter and they buy supplies in farmers' markets like this one. But this year, the soaring prices are eating into their incomes. The devaluation of the Turkish currency is seen as a major driver for this high inflation. The lira has lost 60% of its value in the last three years and 23% this year alone. 
But critics say despite that, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has taken an unconventional approach and prioritized cutting interest rates. And each reduction knocks the lira down even further. The government doesn't prefer a high exchange rate, but it aims to stimulate the economy and give easy access for finance to increase exports and employment. By pushing for lower interest rates, some analysts in Turkey believe Erdogan's primary concern is political, to prevent his water base from eroding. And it's a tool, they say, is used to smooth diplomatic fallouts, such as when Turkish authorities arrested and convicted American pastor Andrew Brunson on terror charges and later released him. After the diplomatic crisis in 2018, the government was forced to increase the interest rate to stop the lira's fall. Then with a new central bank governor, they had premature rate cuts, which caused a credit balloon and high inflation. The level of risk investors face in Turkey is about three times higher than that of its closest peer countries, according to some financial agencies. And that's led to many pulling out, significantly limiting the inflow of foreign cash. Many experts predict the president will continue to intervene in the central bank ahead of general election in 2023. And that probably means little change for Turkey's struggling shoppers. Sinem Kusolo, Al Jazeera, Istanbul. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your three-day weather forecast. For this edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update, tune in on Thursday at 7 pm for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.